Hello, my name's Rob Ogden. I'm Director of Conservation here at Edinburgh Zoo. One of the programmes that we've got in the Conservation Department at the moment is focusing on the illegal wildlife trade, which is an increasing problem for the conservation of species worldwide, and particularly places like Africa, where rhinos and elephants are being poached for their horn and ivory at a really alarming rate. One of the things we're doing here at Edinburgh is to focus on the use of wildlife forensics to help with uh, law enforcement. So, for example, with the trade in rhino horn, we might want to be extracting DNA from a piece of horn and then using uh, DNA sequencing techniques to identify what species it's come from and DNA profiling techniques to understand which individual rhino it's come from. So this is an example of a rhino horn um, and you may not be able to see but there are some very very small holes that have been drilled into the bottom of it and these are the holes that we drill in to extract the keratin in the rhino horn from which we can take the DNA sample that we need. So we can make very, very small holes to get the DNA out um, to create a DNA sequence or a DNA profile. Our illegal wildlife trade program is a partnership with a specialist wildlife forensic organisation called TRACE. And together with TRACE, we're working to develop techniques and help apply them um, throughout uh, Africa and Southeast Asia um, with the idea that not only do we catch the criminals that are involved in wildlife trafficking, but we can also try and reduce um, the illegal poaching activity by making it more likely for people to be caught in the first place. One example of this kind of technique being used uh, in the UK, quite close to home, is uh, a few years ago at Manchester Airport where a man was stopped um, trying to export rhino horn hidden inside a fake antique and he was on his way to China. We took samples of the horn, uh, took DNA from the horn, sequenced it, took a DNA profile from it and were able to match it against a rhino that had died several months earlier um, at another zoo in the UK. In that, in that case, the zoo had disposed of the rhino carcass, it died of natural causes, um, but somebody further down the line outside the zoo had taken off the horns and sold them into the trade. So it's a really good example of how even though the majority of this issue is far away from the UK, um, we have got uh, organised illegal wildlife trade happening in this country which we can also try and do something about.